it takes complicated math to show that something's a good idea, it's probably not a good idea. Hey, I am Chuck the Bureaucrat, and recently I have attracted the attention of some smart MBA types who notice that when I talk about making decisions about how to time your, your military retirement or social security, I don't use the time value of money. Instead, I use a simpler approach that I just call the total lifetime earnings. And I use this admittedly cruder method, not because I don't understand the time value of money, but because when you apply the time value of money approach to a stream of income that has cost of living adjustments, well, you end up in this weird situation where you have to make an unreasonable number of assumptions. To show what I mean, I'm going to do a brief overview of the time value of money and net present value. And then I'll show you the problem that crops up when you have to deal with an income stream that has a cost of living adjustment in it. Oh, and then at the very end of this video, I'll give you a rule of thumb to identify those rare instances where you really do need to dig into the time value of money and give it a look. Oh, and if you're uncomfortable with the math, it's okay. You can ignore anything that has a mathematical symbol to it. You'll be fine. And to be honest, there's not that much math here. Okay, suppose you have a magic goose and this goose lays a golden egg every month on the first of the month, unless the first of the month lands on a weekend or a holiday, and then it's the last business day of the previous month. <laughs> See, it's a magic goose. One day, a businessman comes along and he offers to buy your magic goose. He offers to either pay you a lump sum of $10,000 or he will pay you $2,000 every year for the next six years. This is where the time value of money comes into making financial decisions. It's the idea that a sum of money is worth more now than the same sum of money would be at a future date. $1,000 today is obviously worth more than $1,000, say, two years from now. Now, there's a little philosophical argument that you and your buddies can have over beers about why this is true. Some people say that it's because if you have the money now, you can invest it and therefore it will be worth more later. Other people think about it like the buying power of money decreases over time due to inflation. So if I have the money now, I can buy more with it than I, I will be able to later. Regardless, if you're going to pick between the salesman's option one and option two, you have to have some kind of method to make an apples to apples comparison. One of the ways that people do this is with a technique that is called net present value. Essentially, you're going to penalize all future payments by something called the discount rate. And essentially, that's just a measure of how fast time eats away at the value of money. Then you sum over time and get a number that you can use for making comparisons. Thinking back to the options to buy our golden goose, Obviously, option one has a net present value of $10,000 because, well, he's offering to give you $10,000 right now. If there were no time value of money, the discount rate was zero, then option two would be worth $12,000, $2,000 six times. If we assume a 5% discount rate, the net present value of option two is $10,659. And if we assume a discount rate of 10%, the net present value is $8,704. So by this logic, if you think a discount rate of 5% makes sense, then you would opt for option two. If you expect a discount rate somewhere closer to 10%, then you would prefer option one. Here's the issue. How much is a golden egg worth. Does a golden egg lose value over time? Not like cash does. And I argue that your 
military pension or your VA disability or your social security payment, well, it's a lot like the goose that lays the golden egg. Cost of living adjustments help counteract the effect of the time value of money. If you look carefully at Investopedia's definition of the time value of money, look at what it says. A sum of money is worth more now than in the future. Your pension is more than just a sum of money. And besides, if you're going to use the net present value technique on your pension, how are you going to estimate the discount rate? You got to guess at inflation. You got to guess at the rate of return for investments. You got to make an assumption about what portion of that stream of income you would invest. You end up with a lot of guessing, just dressed up as fancy math. In the meantime, net present value tends to distract you from what I think is the most important factor. How long are you going to live? Nobody knows, but if you're going to live to 80 years old, the difference between claiming Social Security at 62 versus 67, well, that's like 38% of your remaining life. I just cannot see fretting over 2% discount rates when you've got something that big hanging over you. And here's the thing. Most of our retirement planning, military pensions, social security, they all kind of boil down to the same set of options. Do I take a smaller payment sooner or do I wait and get a larger payment? I'm not going to work it out here, but if a comparison of the total lifetime earnings, you know, where you're just assuming that there is no discount rate. If that comparison suggests that you should take the smaller amount sooner, then a net present value calculation with any positive discount rate, well, it's always going to recommend the same thing. Now, granted, if the total lifetime earnings technique recommends that you wait for that later, larger payment, I would dig in and see what the time value of money says about it. But the fact of the matter is, I have yet to find the case in this retirement planning stuff where that really happens. So I think simpler is better here because you get the same outcome with a lot less headaches. And if you want to see an early example of using this total lifetime earnings technique, watch this old video about determining when is the optimal time to retire.